Hello, and welcome. I'm Enigmus. Let's code. Uh, so, we're still working with the uh, Bevy game engine, having fun with that. Last time we left off, not quite sure what to do about our orthographic camera. So I uh, did some, some research, did some looking around, did some thinking about it. And it turns out, here in this cookbook, it had what I uh, needed all along. Making a custom camera projection. Now I know it's, it has what I need. I did it. Made it happen. Now we got some cameras and stuff. There you go. Bam. Ah, that's what I want. She should now be about three times bigger than her normal size. With everything clustered properly. Her scaling uh, the integer. No, 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 no floating values. Right? And we can uh, we also have our reference little uh, terrible pixel art right over there. Uh, super terrible on purpose. Hello, Wolfie. Yeah, I got the uh, I got the, I got me some dots going up that way, and down that way, and over this way, and uh, so that's pretty good. Very good indicator that uh, there's nothing fuzzy going on with our with our art. Yep. So every one of our pixels is represented. Uh, it's just uh, there are three of them now, right? And that's uh, what, yeah, three, <laughs> three, three horizontal and three vertical. So I guess nine total for each uh, for each pixel. Now, uh, we can make her come down a little more. Actually, wait, is it three or is it just two at this point? Think about it. We're at ten eighty, right? So yeah, it should be three. But I can make it go to four here. By going to my full screen on the monitor. And look at that. So so she gets big and small. 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 In a nice stepped fashion. This is uh, this is what I was talking about. This is what we want. And so and when I go to position them, you'll notice that this guy here, he's up there kind of in the not quite the top left corner, but you know, he's leftish and he's in toward the top. Right, and uh, well, how do we get that? Well, woo, way down here in our sprite components, we have, uh, we told it to go negative 10 to the left. So 10 to the left and 10 up, right? And why is this thing not giving me play button? Whatever. So here we go. And there she is. Back again. So this is uh, this is negative ten to the left, right, and eleven up. So uh, before, what I kept, what I was trying to do the whole time, right, was uh, put her at negative twenty. Right, so we can go ahead and, and do that. Let me make you like the default run config or something, because I'd really like to just hit a play button. I don't know what your malfunction is. Hit the play button. I don't know. Yes, that one. Man, I'm gonna get you today, man. I have to, sh I have to hit Shift F10. Whatever. See, now she's halfway off the screen. This is uh, this is what I was looking for last time. Playing around with the camera, and I was putting her to negative twenty. This is uh, twenty tiles to the left, or twenty game units to the left. twenty. You know, kind of like how in the 3D world, right? Uh, you know, the numbers on the grid they can they can mean anything, right? So when I go to Blender, As soon as it loads up, right? There we go. We can say, yes, new general, please. Right? And so you see that, you know, we come with this default cube and everything else. And, and what about it, right? So let's uh, let's go ahead and delete it. And then we're going to, what, add? I don't apply anything. Is it shift add? Yes, add mesh, add cube. Why did I do it? Just re-add the cube so we can take a look. See, these sizes here, they represent meters. So if I would like to have a smaller one meter cube, 
I can go into that property right there at that moment in time, make him a little one meter cube. And so this to me is kind of want 16 pixels in our, you know, in our game, Apocalypse Road Trip, that this is what it represents, right? We're kind of looking at about a meter, maybe a yard. I still have to like figure out what it was I wanted. I think, I think maybe a yard, but if we do that, then I think the dimensions may have to go up slightly compared to what I thought, right? So for instance, I think what the average human that you might want to represent in a game, right? And you might say, oh yes, I would like a six foot tall human, please. Let's see, so six right, feet, two yards. Right? Well, that's, that's all I meant. I meant meters. Tell me meters, because we know it's two yards. Yeah, see, 1.8 meters. Right? Is the sort of, like, uh, rubric people use. Like, oh, yes, yes, your average human is about 5.9 feet, you say. Oh, so you're not going to give it to me in inches? Whatever. I'm not sure how many inches 0.9 feet are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, they say, uh, yes, your average human is about 1.8 meters, right? which is, uh, it's less, right, which, which is two yards, yes, which is two yards. But when you go to take a look at, so 60, 69 inches. All right, yeah, but now I have to go like what sixty nine over twelve and get the remainder. So, you know, no, you know what I mean, right? Yeah, so I'm interested in I guess in sixty nine mod twelve. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, so you know, but you go talk, you go look at a lot of the things, right? Like, uh, oh, let's try this guy, right? Pretty cool dude. I think he's got some top down stuff in here somewhere for us. Let's uh let's take a look, right? We want like uh characters. There we go. Top down characters. So when you look at him, like this is kind of like your you know, your typical scaling that you find in uh these sorts of these sorts of games, right? With uh I was thinking of picking like this sort of guy here in the middle. Uh, the one by two scaling, I felt like that was like, yeah, that's that's what I'm used to with games like, uh, like what, Secret of Mana, Chrono Trigger, that sort of thing, right? Yeah, this 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 guy looks a bit, <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, I feel I felt like overall you'd still go with two by two, though his main body would with his arms down, yes, it would fit inside of a one by two, but you know, arms arms stretched out, T pose style. You would need the whole. You would need two by two to to represent the arms stretched out, uh, and that's important if you're like if you want them to wield weapons or other things, right? So the point is, is like so his he comes a little short of here, which you'd expect if this were being measured in meters. In meters, so. Which is fine. All right, so uh, there was a... I thought there was something or rather where they were talking about heights. Oh, this, this was it. Yeah, see? So, and then you have... You know, here's a variety of stuff and things. You see different peoples and at different heights. Sort of like, here's what a ute might look like. Or an adult or an elder, right? That's all That's all fine and good. And they got, they got ranges of heights. Yeah, so if we made them yards in stat, like, uh, this guy would, might have to be sized up more than he already is. Not 100% sure. Either that or we're supposed to be taking, like, what, foreshortening into account, right? So if we take, uh, the foreshortening on the x-axis into account, right, let's, uh, let's think about it. How tall are our dudes, right? So let's let's say let's go with a six foot tall dude. All right, two yards precisely. Let's go ahead and assume then that each tile of ours is is one yard. Right? 
So you have to remember. So that means so that means he's 32, 32 pixels of height. You know, in a three D sort of world, right? If you were just looking at him like straight on side view, right? And you're kind of looking at 32 pixels of height. All right, there's a there's an issue there though. Yeah, where uh, that's not quite what we want, right? Because we're looking at him from an angle. So the very top of his head, this sort of point right there on this red dude, right? You see my cursor? Yeah, that's kind of like the top of his. That's the beginning of the top of his head. Everything further back, that's like, this is the front top of his head. So this and going back is just the top of his head. All right, and that's the way that this sort of uh, perspective works, right? Is you can, see the, you can see the side view pretty well, though slightly foreshortened. And you can see the top pretty well, though a little foreshortened. Uh, so, and, and unless I, and according to my earlier experiments that I had done, let's see, what do I want? Do I want one of these? Do I want, no? I don't think I wanted that. What do I want? Uh, let's see, if I hold down Alt, I get something maybe. Shift, Alt, Control. Maybe I do need scientific, and then I can do that. What am I looking for? Bow, bow, bow. Um... Seriously, why is am I having a hard time finding? I don't have been in here. I'm definitely getting something, right? That's control two. Okay, come on. Thing's messing with me, I think. <sighs> All right, that's fine. Comes up often enough. Here's what we want. We want SQRT2. Thank you. <laughs> I don't want all of everything. That's what we want. All right, cool. Got it. Now, why did we? Why did we want it? Actually, I want to bring this back. And then I want to go take a look at our calculator. All right. I want to go into back into Pixel here so we can take a look at looking at and i think that you know kind of what we want here right is we want to go with the um, as we were talking about the 32 pixels here right right so we want four short end All right, so I think we want to take this over that. And we get 22 pixels high instead. All right. And let me know that we're talking about 22 pixels high. Let's go ahead. I'm going to save the image. Maybe I'll just copy the image. And uh, let's pull up like a uh, Krita, I think. Krita may be able to help me get some measurements. You'll probably close this guy. I'll leave him for now. You know, he's not hurting nothing. We can close our, our game, though. That's just taking up cycles. We're not even looking at it. All right. So, yeah, it's just new file. You know, whatever sort of thing. We don't care. Just make us a new one. Right, we can uh, uh, control V what, as web. I don't know. Cool. So let's first try to determine like how big is a single pixel. It looks this looks pretty fuzzy. Like it's. Hmm. I'm not even sure if we can accurately get anything from this. It looks like it had been resized at some point already. Uh, doesn't look right. Right? So if there is like what? How many pixels? How many pixels is that? Four? Hmm. I don't know. 
I'm really hoping to get like a better sort of reference. Something in the correct pixel sizes at least. Something that hadn't been scaled weirdly. Let's um let's open it in a new tab. What do we get? Looks fuzzy still, or is it the same? Let's go ahead and we can copy the image. Come back in Akrita. Uh, let's go ahead and just what? Control Z. Okay. Now what? Control V. Hmm. As a web. Yeah, it's a little. Oh, fuzzy. Huh. Is this some artifact I'm getting from Krita or what? Lord MZTE, hello. How are you? Wow. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate very much. So, anyway, so we we're thinking about, you know, pixel character sizing. We're thinking about our cameras and stuff. We're thinking about the uh, unit of measure that we want our uh, we want a game unit to be in. Just thinking about how, like you know, in a three D sort of a world, that uh, you know, do we want this to be a meter? Do we want this to be a yard? Sort of a thing, and then translating that into our, our little game that we got going. Let's see, the first one here I found using Rust for game dev. <laughs> well, except for with Godot. Ah, yes. Yeah, lots of folks using uh, Rust and uh, Godot together. It's probably the safest route. <laughs> and I don't know that I won't end up having to go down that route eventually. Uh, let's see. What am I? What was I looking at? Right, this guy here. But yeah, we are we are playing around with the uh, Bevy game engine, uh, seeing what we can see with that. I've recently set up an orthographic camera to uh, to do what I wanted to with it. It was uh, which was what? There we go. There she is. So everything's kind of measured in tiles now. So the size of this. Sp you know, sprite I brought in is one by one. You can see it's a... So the original pixel size is 16 by 16. But in this uh, 1080p sort of view, I think that we're at a times three sort of uh, scale. See, what scares me the most about Amethyst in Bevy is the non-existent GUI editor. Ah, I feel like I'd mess up all the all the levels. Well, for so for right now, I'm hoping to actually take a... I'm, I'm mostly interested in testing out a lot of game mechanics, throwing a bunch of stuff together. And I felt like, you know, Roguelike World had a lot of valuable lessons, I thought, in terms of, you know, hey, look, we could just do a bunch of uh, randomly generated uh, levels and content, etc., and throw it out there. And we could uh, more quickly test and iterate, I think, on, on gameplay and game mechanics and, and that sort of a thing. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just setting Bevy up to, you know, display a grid of tiles. <laughs> I think uh, at first we'd probably only have, like, the two tiles, right? And then uh, get a little character guide going around. But yeah, she's, she's just there for fun, mostly. <laughs> You know, it was one of those things where, like, you know, to show to show some friends, hey, look at look how quickly I can get uh, an image going up in Bevy. It was like thirty some lines of code, I guess, to to, you know, to throw her on the screen. And then from then on, I've been I've been playing around with the cameras. Yeah, so everything's in kind of in world units now rather than pixel units, which is the default for Bevy. Kind of like a dough, I guess, where everything's measured in pixels. Uh, but yeah, I was like, yeah, I don't measure things by, uh, by world units. Kind of like you do in 3D games. Yeah, that's why I'm, that's why I kind of like bringing this up here. And yeah, we've got a meter by meter by meter sort of cube. Yeah, I was thinking about like, do we want it to be in yards or meters? And the reason I'm kind of thinking about yards is that a lot of the source material for the game mechanics that I'm originally sort of investigating and looking at. Well, that's, that's all measured in yards. 
uh, where each inch on the that tabletop represents two yards. So if uh, I'm just it's more about explaining stuff to to people who may be watching. <laughs> and or who yeah and I, and I and I tend to put these videos up on YouTube as well so you know so anyone who shows up and was watching and is like why would you want game units rather than pixels and it's like I'm just I'm just talking about my process right uh also uh if you look at the about page on my uh my Twitter there you'll see that uh, I've got some weird examples from Godot where I was kind of mixing 3D and 2D together. So it really does kind of, uh, they, you know, they, they may very well tie together. For my initial goals with Bevy though, yeah, it's just, I think it's just gonna be straight 2D for a moment. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll see how far we get. Sort of a thing, especially with, uh, you know, 2D versus 3D. Uh, because I know that uh, PBR in Bevy right now is still very much work in prog. Uh, yeah, it's a work in progress. So we're just uh, we're just playing around with stuff. So I got some I got some to dos in here in terms of uh, coding. Thinking about playing some uh, music. You guys can let me know how the audio levels are. And uh, yeah, we just get to get to work moving some code around, trying to organize the project. I was thinking about basically having a sort of bevy integration module in rust and then uh you know we we throw a bunch of our you know sort of bevy specific code into there uh, in terms of uh new features on the project today i was thinking about maybe doing some stuff with the window that pops up let's see yeah i know right it's like yeah so just for everyone who's can't see the chat i guess in future videos all right, Lord MZTE says Godot using pixels for units feels a bit weird to me. Wouldn't that mean everything would scale with the game resolution? And yeah, they have a variety of modes for scaling. Uh, but yeah, so you could pick and choose between how you want it to scale. I, I also didn't quite get it. There was an article I was discussing in my, my last uh, last time I was streaming about uh how to do godot pixel pixel perfect sort of a uh, rendering now this fellow here decided that he did not like uh i guess the world like your view of the world to increase or decrease so with his solution he uh here, here we go he kind of has this game floating <laughs> and almost like an interior window to the window sort of a thing but to me i'm like you know i don't care if the if the player can see more of the world than some other players can it's like it's fine and uh yeah it doesn't matter this much to have like floating windows and windows right so so hence that was uh, another part of my camera setup in here i don't know if uh, you got to see it I'll go ahead and run it again. So there we go. We got an anime girl and our, our little cube guy here for reference. If I grow the window, oh, she's like moved off to the side. But why is that? Well, I could uh, I could make my window bigger. There you go. Now you can see her. <laughs> so yeah, so we play around with a bunch of things. What else? Yeah, we can make her small. Yeah, so depending on how small we go. So this right here, I think this is 1x resolution for her. Maybe 2x. 3x. 4x. Sort of thing. So that way she looks pretty She looks pretty decent. Like whether we're uh, kind of at 1080p, 4k, 720p, in any of the common resolutions. That was that was the goal to get uh, pixel perfect uh, rendering going uh, at any resolution, and you know, not caring whether the user can see a little bit more of the game world or not. These were sorts of the these were the notes that that I took for for making it happen. And then what else? Yeah, and then we then then I programmed it up into uh, this camera here. 
Uh, so last time I got a little stuck though because it wasn't clear to me like how to keep some values around in Bevy. Because we have to declare a camera down here, I thought that this was also a good place to configure the camera. Uh, apparently not, as what it really does is it overwrites itself here in its own update function that's being called it, like whenever the window is resized. So, and in the original ortho, you know, Let's see, what is this? So, impl camera projection, if I come in here, will I find... Yeah, so here's the original camera I was trying to use. I filled in all these values correctly. But then, like, on update, it would take in the width and the height, and then, and then it would reset it. <laughs> so, like, nothing I had put in there even mattered. I was like, darn it, fine, whatever, I'll make my own. So I made my own camera. All right. Let's, uh, let's get coding. All right. So yeah, like I said, I think I want some sort of like, um, maybe like a bevy integration module. I think I'll st stick with the new 2018 way of doing things in Rust. Let's see, this, this is IntelliJ. Yep. So... And we're gonna like, maybe be on, or just maybe bevy. Bevy integration. Yes, that's, that looks good. Let's do that. It's not included. Oh no. Uh, let's see. Bevy um, int. There we go. But yeah, this is this is IntelliJ. Now. I think I could come in here to say a new package and I could say bevy int. And then what? We want to say a new must file. I think we want, yeah, let's just go with the, the camera or projection. I guess, uh, you just call it projection. Let's see. I initially did Rust with IntelliJ 2, but then switched to VS Code because IntelliJ would always think. There's a bunch of errors, although there were none, especially with macros. Uh, it appears to mostly be better. Sometimes I found that, you know, it doesn't update as quickly, or you know, as I might like. So I have to wait, wait around, like wait for a few seconds, and then IntelliJ, you know, catches back up, and it's like, oh yeah, it turns out everything is good. But, you know, uh, so far everything seems, you know, okay. But maybe that was uh, it was a while ago. But, uh, yeah, Rust, you know, Rust uh, seems to be fairly well supported these days, it seems. Alright. Yes. And add that. Alright. That way, if we uh, have any other projections, too, that then that package will make more sense, even. Right? So, yeah, we want the depth calculation in there, we want the default implementation in there. Alright, that looks pretty good. Um, yeah, he's gonna get his own little, he's gonna get his own little module. Alright. So it was attached to Bevy. Yes? Hey, I think it did what I wanted it to do. Cool. I think that, yeah, we could do Either a mod projection or, by the way, you should consider using librs for putting a bunch of functions in. So, I was doing some reading up on the new editions of Rust. A librs. Yes, okay, I think I see what you're saying. Yes, librs as being a, as a part of the, uh, yes, I get it. Yes, I probably should do that. I'm still, I'm still getting used to Rust organization. I am, uh, I am not an experienced Rustation yet. Uh, my day job, I am a Java slash Scala sort of developer who's been doing a fair amount of, like, web application work. So, now this is, this, this is me just taking back at home, getting some coding done, <laughs> hanging out with folks. 
trying to learn some things. But yeah, that's uh, okay, neither are you. Yeah, also coming from Java and Kotlin. Okay, sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've, uh, I've, been doing, I've been doing the JVM for, I don't know, maybe 20 years now. 20 years on the JVM. <laughs> I was like, uh, do something different now with the rest. But yeah, yeah, I think I, I think I know what you're talking about. Yes, having a having a lib uh, adjacent to the main RS, and I think I've done that with some other projects that I was playing around with Rust. It's uh, so I'll I'll consider that shortly. Uh, <laughs> and I was happy with uh, okay, Bevy and it knows about this guy. And I think that we wanted to basically what do a pub. Well, first off, we should probably get this to compile, right? But, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get this to compile a little. All right, Mat 4. Do you not know where the Mat 4 is? Yeah, I guess we can go with Bevy Prelude. Or that or Bevy Math, right? Let's see. And knit. Um. Well, I'm not initializing Bevy with it, no. Um. Integration. Yeah, that's uh, at least you know it seemed like a sensible. Yeah, it's about it's about integration code. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. Looking like bevy integer. Hmm. Um. Well, they're both kind of similar sounding words, right? Integer, integrate. I mean, it's. I guess that just is what it is. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. We'll, uh, what? We'll put it in here. There we go. And I'll figure out some, you know, rest ways of documenting stuff later. <laughs> I mean, it's. Integ. I mean. Integer is right there. <laughs> All right. What, am I, what was I looking at? Yeah, we still need to get some things to compile. Yeah, depth calculation. That's what we needed. And I think that should get us both of those things. And I also want to move Bevy and NetRS into Bevy. No, if you, again, that's 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 one of the things I was talking about in the uh, 2018 edition of the uh, of the Rust stuff. Uh, it seemed like they were moving away from mod RS files, right? So if we go to like what to the Rust book, yeah, because I know what you mean. I was I've been playing around with the Rust for a little while now too, and I see that a lot of libraries are still doing the thing, right? If I put in 2018 here. Um, okay, Appendix E, I think, is what I need for additions. There's an addition guide. Okay, yes. And uh, what are we looking at? The module system. The uh, path clarity changes. Let's see. So, oh, path clarity. I think that's what we needed. All right, so extern crates no longer needed. The crate keyword refers to the current crate, paths, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It says a foo.rs and a foo subdirectory may coexist. And mod rs is no longer needed when placing submodules in a subdirectory. Right, so. Uh, so that's the kind of thing that I was like trying to figure out like, well, how, how's that look like now? You know, I guess I put the base file in there, and then I, then I have the path in there, and that's supposed to get me what I wanted. You know, no more mod.rs. In 2015, if you had a submodule, right, then you would say mod foo, right? And then you could, it would either be looking for foo.rs or foo.modrs. Uh, it can live in, yeah, either place, right? But it must... Right. If it has submodules of its own, then it must be foo.modrs. So in 2018, this is this is what they show, right? Where you have foo.rs, a foo directory, and then a bar rs. It, it appears that it's discouraged, 
but I'm not 100% sure. Like I said, I know a lot of libraries haven't exactly, like, seemed to have caught up to this yet. Uh, but, but yeah, this is like, yeah, this is the 2015 way of doing it with a mod RS, and this is the 2018 way of doing it with not. I guess, um, other people were, you know, I guess, in, like, in the tabs here, right? You know, you'd open up all sorts of different files, and they'd all say mod.rs. <laughs> That was, uh, I think that's, I think that's what that deal was. Now, IntelliJ is nice in that, like, at least, like, if there's a duplicate, like, here I've got Projection RS, and there, here there's a Camera Projection RS, which is nice. But, uh, yes, I mean, IntelliJ would do that. I guess some other tabbed editor programs might not, <laughs> right? VS Code does that, too? Alright, well, that's cool. I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, it's just it's what it's just what it was saying. All right, if I just even look up tabs, yeah, eliminates the special name. And if you have a bunch of files open in your editor, you can clearly see the names instead of having a bunch of tabs named mod RS. <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, I know IntelliJ doesn't quite do that either, and so VS Code doesn't do it. So it's like, eh. but uh, this appears to be the 2018 way of uh, of doing it. I was just gonna stick with that. Let's see. So we so we did projection RS. Okay, this looks this looks compiler happy now. It has all the includes I think it needs. Uh, I think for Bevy and Net, I like the idea of doing like I think a pub use projection that one. For now, right? Just to keep things easy. And then, uh, and then, and then Vot. Uh, uh, so we move camera into its own thing. We could probably just leave this inside of Bevy integration itself. It's not terribly large or anything, right? We would probably just pub use it in there anyway. Oops, where did it go? Here we go. Uh, right from the prelude? I mean, it's where it originally got stuff to begin with, right? So. Make sure everything is the same as it was. And this here is going to be from our own crate. This is mostly, uh test code. Well, all right, so yeah, we've got a little bit of game mechanics defined, and we've got a little bit of resource files and other stuff defined, and we were using ROM and SERD for our serialization needs, uh, but soon I think that we're going to, uh, we're going to take a look at what Bevy provides in terms of uh, being able to load files, since it does have some sort of a uh, resource file loading stuff in there, which we can see when we look at here, for instance. Uh, yeah. Maybe he's got some sort of an asset server, we can load stuff, you know. And so, by the way, why don't I convert the Bevy integration comment into a doc? Because I don't know how to do Rust docs. <laughs> that was one of those things I hadn't bothered looking up yet. I don't know, I don't know how to do Rust. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm learning. What did you say? I could just, uh, I could, I could do this, and now it's a special thing. <laughs> Is that how that works? Well, does that compile? Well, I have to do some other stuff. So, oh, you type cargo doc. Yeah, and it works exactly like Java doc. All right. Yeah, yeah. I type cargo. Oh, oh, a cargo doc will produce. You know, like a Java doc like documentation as I see in the various uh, library documentations that I found. Yes. Yes, I, I knew they did it somehow. I just hadn't bothered to look up the the syntax for it. <laughs> I 
It was like, it was one of those things where it's like, I just, I just want to see if I can get stuff to work. When you're getting stuff to work, it's like, I don't know. Uh, serve? Oh, I don't know. Could be fun. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely one of those things that'd be fun to play, play with. Yeah. Oh, for my dependencies too. So like uh, locally, then like I would have access to the to my dependencies, uh, like uh, Rust docs. Yeah, that'd be fun. Uh, might be good to have a local sort of a copy for it. Look at that. Yeah. So let's go ahead and import some stuff. I assume that you're gonna show up or do something at some point. Really? All right. Where's our art plugin go? There's our art plugin, right? Good. And then what? We need some sort of the pixel one, right? Yeah. Why is this thing being weird? All right. Something happened. You can tell Jay's just being slow again. I don't know. We'll see. Ah, okay, now you're gonna be upset because this is not public, which is fair, I guess, right? Because, uh, yeah, all right, let's, uh, let's go ahead and make these guys public, I guess. Because, uh, we want, you know, we want the users of the Pixel Ortho projection to be able to, uh, do some stuff. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, doc comments are actually turned into attribute macros by the compiler. Stocks picks those macros out of the AST. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah. I, I always knew that the Rust docs had some pretty neat stuff going on. I just uh, yeah, you know, kind of like testing. Testing seems super neat in Rust too, and um, I think inside of yeah, there we go. That's that's what I've got for testing so far. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just, you know, small steps at a time. It's kind of a hobby project. Just trying to do what I can to get stuff going. Alright. But, you know, yeah, it's good. I could turn it into more stuff. I, you know, it, but, you know, still gotta keep the day job going. Let's see, let's, uh, let's make sure that we're doing things well here. Alright, so yeah, we're use, use crate. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's do that. Now at least we know everything's sort of pub use projection. Yep, pub. Okay, that's using bevy stuff. By the way, unit tests can eventually go in the file they are testing in a module called test. Yes, yes, I did. That's why. Yeah, I was, didn't I show that off in the in the model down here? Right. So this is my model RS, and it's here to test model stuff. So I've got a, a mod called tests, and then. Uh, you know, derive test. And the only test I have is I should probably write some tests at some point. <laughs> but yeah, the the idea is to yeah, this is for the this is for the mo module, the, oh, the model module, I guess. <laughs> so, but yeah, I have a. Yep, that's where they go. I just need to, yeah, write them at some point. Right now, I'm more interested in, like I said, just. Adding to the project, do a little bit of organization, add to the project a little bit. Let's see, well, at least now you can be sure that one is always one. Indeed. Indeed. Which, you know, I've, I've heard of some people getting themselves into some very weird troubles with uh, C, I think, where they did something or other to make it so that, you know, a number was no longer equal to that number anymore. <laughs> I don't expect to be able to do that in Rust, but, uh... Yeah, it's a thing. It's a thing that happens sometimes. At least that's, that's the word on the street. All right, so I got I got some main. I got some setup. Let's see. Is this? Yeah. So this right here is still doing some bevy stuff. True. It's not quite. This is about you know we have a bevy app. Theoretically, I guess it's more part of its uh, ECS. Alright. 
Now we're going to look into loading files for startup. That makes uh, addition return something incorrect by using reflection to change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could you could do weird stuff with reflection. All right, all right. So that's that's been moved. All right. So a little little bit of uh, organization. We'll see uh, how well that lasts. We were, I know I was interested in a couple of things. I wanted to learn how to efficiently render the tile maps. I wanted to look into loading scenes from files after startup. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I was also interested in. What was, I, what was I looking up today? I was looking up some windowing stuff today, actually. Yeah, because one of the things I'm a little annoyed with right now is that when I when I go to launch the app, right? Well, now it's to compile so that's fine. Give it a moment. So it did just launch right there on the top left corner this time, huh? Does it always do that? Huh. Alright, I have to see what's going on. Because I recalled it being random before. So I moved it that time. Does it just always pop up in the top left? Look at that. Yeah, that's a little annoying to me, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, what, what was it I was playing around with? Yeah, I was playing around with, um, I was playing around with another thing. I was playing around with the bracket. And that, that's what was annoying me. Alright, so if I go to my RLTK play, and I cargo run this guy. Oh, now, now, now everything, yeah, just, everything's just gonna prove me wrong and start up at zero, zero. All of the time, perfectly. <laughs> Alright, uh, wow. Just whatever, man. <laughs> I, I know I've seen it just pop up randomly, and it's like, but now it's like 100% of the time, every new window, boom, boom, boom. Like clockwork. It's like, what is going on? Whatever. Let's see how it is. Gaslighting me. That's, that's what's going on. <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah. Um, okay, so I was thinking about how I wanted to change the window at startup time to be at the position that I chose. Uh, right now, it's always sort of just doing that. You know, it's kind of like little system stuff I'm trying to get correct now. Yeah. You know, trying to make sure things are doing well from that sort of standpoint, I guess. Heck, if it's if it's always just gonna show up in the correct place. Sure, whatever. Whatever. I'm gonna move her back to being center if I'm gonna keep having her there at all. I think we were we were interested in scenes, but I also recall that being on the list of things that were like um what that Bevy was working on lately, right? Bevy's working on scenes. So yeah, it talks about having scenes, and I've seen some examples using scenes. I know that scenes are in there like focus areas, which means there should be a lot of changes up and coming there soonish, I imagine. And we've got a this is a focus area tracking issue. All right. Uh, you elaborate on your vision for inline assets. Hmm. So yeah. Seems like some stuff are coming up for that. I know that... I was also interested, I think, in learning... What was it? I need to I need to learn the WGPU RS stuff. 
because this is what Bevy is using under the hood. Alright. And we need to learn it to figure out how to properly display a tile map. Because if we go, we can we can check out Bevy tile map. Which is uh so if we go to Awesome Bevy here, then it has uh Bevy tiled. That's what it is. And so this is a plugin for rendering, for rendering tiled maps. Well, tiled is it was all well and good, but we're I was hoping to uh, basically just go roguelike with it and have randomly generated stuff. And you know, our, our first couple of tiles will probably just be uh, you know as simple as can be, anyways. You know, wall and floor. That's uh, I think that's basically what I'm looking at doing, right? Wall and floor. And so. You don't really need tiled support, per se. That's something that this thing does do that I need to kind of, like, look into. And, e and even if I did go with something like tiled, I think I might go with something else anyways. I already have something called, um... Tile Setter. And Tile Setter's pretty cool. So I was gonna go with that. But the point is... So he's already... He's, he's got... He's got some shader stuff going. So this is our this is our frag shader, right? Fragment shader. This is our uh, vertex shader. So uh, yeah, it takes some. So this is all the type of stuff that uh, we need to figure out and do in order to have um, what. He's got a few things here, right? The loader should be about reading the tiled map, I believe. Right, he's he's gonna try to read some tiled map. I don't need I don't need to read nothing. I looked at his lib. All right, so yeah, all right. This is about uh, render graphs, setting up some resources, adding map assets, and a tiled map loader. Right, so we, we don't need we don't need to load nothing. He's got a map RS here. This seems to define some uh, basic primitive types that you need for doing tiled map construction, right? Although his is a way more complicated than I would have thought you'd have needed. Uh, to me, I, I thought a tile was basically just like an enum. You know, a rust enum. You just sort of say which one you want. And I think that's about all you needed to know about it. Uh, maybe. Maybe not. Think about it. So... Yeah, I guess unless you wanted to do things like flip the tiles, right? Uh, rotate them, flip them, you know, vertically, horizontally, however you do it. And that's theoretically a way of saving a fair amount of space, I guess, in terms of the uh, files that you would store and the memory that it would take up. But our tiles are like 16 by 16 anyways. And I have really good software for making a tile set. Uh, tile trait, and then you can have an enum of tiles if you want, and the enum implements the trait. I'm not sure what the what the level of abstraction is useful for, right? Uh, I'm not sure why I would make a tile trait. I mean, unless there's a, I, don't, I can't think of any methods a tile would even need to implement, right? Um. They just need to exist, I think. Uh, I have to think about that. Although, no, okay. So it depends on how you want to do it, right? So if you want to be able to load in like a list of the tiles, like from a file somewhere, right? Then it might be good to have like you know to be able to match up. Some sort of an ID, I guess, with uh, maybe um, with an asset, like with a with a tile, uh, with a texture atlas or something, right? So you could be like, oh yes, this this tile is at these locations on the texture atlas, or you know, given a texture atlas, you know, you're like, oh, oh yeah, I'm I'm the tile that's over there, please, you know, that's that sort of thing. Yeah, all right, so. 
It depends on how much you want to, like, hard code it versus, like, read everything in from a file at runtime, I guess. So, a lot of what's going on here with, well, I don't know, this still seems like too much. Because this seems almost correct, except for I probably only have it in one array. And then, you know, your chunk would understand, like, oh, I have a width of x tiles. Okay, and then you'd have an array of size x times however many rows, right? Let's see, the point would be that an enum, unlike Java, can't store any information, which is, which is guaranteed every variation has. This means that every time you wanted to do basically anything with the tile, you'd have to use a match to get the values. If you had a trait, which the tile implements, then you'd only need uh, one match in the methods for getting the data. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I've already been doing that with the model, though. Right, so if I, if I go to the model here. So I have an enum of skill. There are only so many skills in the game, and this is probably too many skills. <laughs> right? And I was all like, I know. Skill will have a function called linked attribute. And from here, I use a match to determine what all the linked attributes are. But I was thinking about it. I think that there's a crate whereby I can, like, uh... I can specify some sort of derive in here. Which will give my enum some ordering. And then I can basically have some sort of, like, const linked adders. Although it's gonna be mad because it's not like but linked adders. Is that is that better? I don't know. Right. So then you could have like what adder types, and then how many of these guys are there? I don't know. There's a bunch. We'll say five because I don't care. <laughs> right. And then and then I could just say like you know adder type. Uh. Right, smarts, and then keep, you know, etc, etc, etc. And then inside of here, as opposed to a match statement, right, I could, uh, I could just look up the, the ordinal value. And it's like match, match expressions can have ors, yes, they absolutely can have ors. Uh, and I learned that after I originally coded it. So, you are correct. They absolutely can have ORS. And so I could make this have many less lines of code. Uh, I think there's a maintenance cost in doing it. But to be fair, I don't think that these linked attributes will change. So, yeah, not too much of a cost. Right? Uh... So yeah, I could yes, I could do I could do the ores there and uh, and there would be a lot less lines of code. <laughs> but I don't know that it makes it faster. Uh, I think I still want to move along for now. That's more of like an off-screen sort of a thing I could do, I guess, to like to make the code. Uh, yeah. A little more streamlined, I guess. Right? That seems like a good off-screen task. Yeah, I wanna I wanna figure out these uh I figure out how to render this stuff. So so look, see he's got maps, he's got chunks, the chunks sound great, that's that seems like the exact sort of thing. Strange that IntelliJ doesn't complain about it. Well I'd hope it wouldn't, because again, for, for most cases that you know, like, I, I get why you'd want to be able to do it, and I probably will do it. 
but there's a maintenance cost, right? Because now it's like, you know, every time you have to change one, I have to go look up where it is and, you know, cut it out of there and do some other stuff. Or I could just like, oh, look, I want to change performance to being smarts for some reason. You know. But these won't change much, so I don't care about the maintenance cost. And I also think that maybe just throwing everything into an array would be you know, like faster at runtime anyway. So if I did do something, it might be that. Let's see. I don't want to. So I'm not entirely sure. You know, project ortho and unproject ortho is about. It may maybe about trying to like go from mouse coordinates to. Like, like, window coordinates to tile coordinates or map coordinates or something. Maybe that's what this is about. And that's, like, that's orthographic versus isometric versus... Uh, is this the, the center of the map? I guess it helps you to find the center of math, map whether you're doing, you know, orthogonal versus isometric. Sure. So the other thing to look at, okay, is what Bevy already has. So we already have a texture atlas. Well, there's texture atlas sprite. Yeah, texture atlas sprite sheet. So that'd be good to know. Um, I think let me let me double check uh, a Godot project I was playing around in. Hmm, is it this one? Probably. All right. So I have a tile set in here, and it is, yeah. <laughs> I made it huge so I could just keep adding tiles to it and not worry about it. But I think there's only like, what, four tiles in there? All right. Uh... Hang, hang, hang on a second while I start up some, some software. I'm not sure how privacy where this software is. So. Uh, not that I've been super great about maintaining my privacy you know, through doing this stuff anyways, but, well, you know, whatever. I want to launch Steam without it telling everybody who I am. Um... Launching it or what? Come on, Steam. Yeah, sorry, the screen was black now because I was launching Steam and I wasn't sure, like, how much Steam was going to tell you about who I was. <laughs> and I was launching Steam so I could get to A-Sprite. And I'm trying to get to A-Sprite so I could load up uh, some tiles I was playing with earlier. Which, uh, let's see... Do I want the raw here? You have some raw tiles? Yeah, there we go. Cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is, uh... <laughs> yeah, these are, these are the type of tiles I was, I was, I was playing with. Alright, so yeah. So maybe we could, for fun, just kind of see what Bevy's already got going for it before I start trying to, you know, uh, come up with a super efficient tile renderer thing. When I don't even uh, know what I've got going. Oh yeah, this is like, this is the best. Uh... Highest quality pixel art I've ever seen, I think. <laughs> uh, uh, see, there's a... This is meant to be a great, so I think I... Is this, is this as dark as that gets? Come on, give me like, uh, give me something dark. I don't think that's any darker. Uh, like a black color? <laughs> Yeah, there we go. There's a black color. Let's see, that's uh, where's my... Boom, there we go. I remember, there we go. Oh, you know, it's kind of a pit. <laughs> uh, retro feel to look like it's uh, running on console. Oh, that's great. Uh, you know, not purposefully, just so much as like, you know... So far, I think every time I've tried to make a game, I get super hung up on the artwork. To the point where it's like, you know, if I can't make it look good, then, like, I, I kind of give up. I don't know, sort of thing. And it's like, no, I need, I want to make a game. I've always wanted to make a game. Let's make a game. And so, it, let's not worry about artwork. So if this is what it looks like for a moment. <laughs> and that's what it looks like. And then, uh, if I actually get something really good up and going, that seems very game-like. Maybe I'll hire someone who can do art for me. <laughs> you know, that sort of that sort of a thing. Uh, but yeah, let's see. So I kind of want to do a save as here. Put it inside of a new folder. Let's go into our work area for Apocalypse Road Trip. Assets. Wait, no, it's not an asset, is it? No, we want to put this under some sort of like raw, raw. And uh, yeah, we'll put this under raw. Hopefully, you don't tell me you put it. Okay, good. You can say what? Uh, tile assets. Right? Okay, and throw it in there. Cool. That's sort of the idea with that. And, uh, now I think I want to export it. Oops. I don't, I don't think I chose where to, where, to, where to export it to. Oh, goodness. Where's it at? Tile sets wrong? Yeah, alright. Assets. Let's, uh... Yeah, so we get, like, a uh, tile. Tile. Yeah, sets. All right, I'm fine with that. Just tile set of one. We can come up with more interesting names for tile sets later on, especially as we actually come up with some tile sets, right? That's fine and good. So well, this is this right here is certainly higher quality than my last tile. <laughs> I, will, I will say that. Yeah, this is a uh, this is. This is me not letting art get in the way of her. My, my bad art not letting me get in the way of making a game anymore. Yeah, so this is this is this is my a really bad tile. <laughs> this at least has like you know some some attempt at making like readable tiles. I don't know. Come on, why, why are you making this so hard, IntelliJ? Pan around. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's pretty good. Look at that. <laughs> Feel a little bit of great here going to the abyss. These are this is a floor. This, these are doors. One of them's closed or one of them's open. <laughs> I think I think this is a wall. I wasn't sure if this was a switch or what, but I felt like it was a fun enough pattern to throw in there. Uh, this seemed like maybe some sort of a grate or something. I don't I don't know. <laughs> Just, uh, just playing around. <laughs> it's abstract, yeah. Mm 
Yeah, we got yeah, we got a great going there. It's pretty cool. Yeah, you, know, you don't need a lot to convey an, to convey an idea, and for uh, for getting started, it seems like you know, good enough. I could also just uh, take Kenny Kenny assets, I guess. Whatever. <laughs> what was I what was I doing? What was I doing? I was thinking about something. Right, I think I was gonna go back into the main. I was gonna stop playing around with uh, Marissa. I'll probably even just get rid of her. And then the um uh, and tile one. We're not we're not using that. Let's see, so I still need to figure these things out, so those are still valid to-dos. And I don't care that you're not used, leave me alone about it. Alright, so... Uh, I think we're gonna take a look at the bevy... I'm gonna do some sort of, like, texture outlets thing. How does, how does that work out? So, let's see, do you have anything in the cookbook? Went to the cheat sheet earlier. Uh, do you have any sort of texture atlas? Nope. That's cool. So that means I'll go to the... Alright, so much for that. I thought I had this opened up already. Let's come here into our examples for 2D and yeah. Doing, so he's got a sprite sheet here, which I think is different than this. I'm not sure. So, is, is what I have even a sprite sheet, or is it a sprite? So this right here is a texture atlas sprite. So uh, that might be fun to look at in terms of like what we got going on. This is for animating a sprite. That's right? so what I'm saying. It doesn't look like tiles. It seems like. Seems like a sprite sheet for a sprite to do animations. Here he's animating a sprite system. What do we got for texture atlas? So this is generating a new texture atlas from a folder containing individual sprites, which is not what we have. Right? We we just have a texture atlas. I guess we just we just have a big picture. With, uh, with sprites and things on it. Alright, so if I go to sprite sheet here, we see that he is loading up assets, textures, RPGs, chars, Gabe, and Gabe's idle run. PNG. Alright, so I'm a big fan of Minecraft's approach to this where each texture is a separate PNG, and then at startup, they auto magically gets stitched into a big atlas file which is then used at runtime um yeah that seems like a legitimate way of going about it i think that when i did my picture i was like you know quick stuff for good dope and it seemed like throwing a bunch of stuff into one picture was a good idea it's neat that you know they start off with the individuals and then it stitches them into one file and then uses it at runtime. That's been the reason I think I've been avoiding having multiple files to begin with, right? Is the, I understood there's a performance cost to that. Uh, and also just, you know, if you're, if you, if you have like 16 by 16 assets for the most part, and you can easily throw like a 2K by 2K sized picture or bigger right into the gpu and it's like why wouldn't you just like throw it all in there all at once and then just sort of reference them i've also been playing around with uh, a little bit of 3d modeling uh just some super basic stuff and it seemed pretty cool to basically take the faces i was interested in and uh set them equal to whatever color i wanted them to be set to But, uh, yeah, alright, so yes, we've got some sort of texture atlas from a grid here, etc. 
So yeah, this this looks this looks pretty neat. I think that uh, I think we'll play with that and see what we can get. All right, I'll just throw that down there for for my reference, and then uh, let's play around. All right, so we might have some sort of like what let texture. Is equal to the asset server dot. What are we looking at? Load. Sync, huh? Sure, why not? Let's do a synchronized load. Ah, thank you for the follow, Michael Trainer. Oh, gotta go. We'll see you later, Lord MZTE. <laughs> and yeah, thank you very much for the follow, Michael Trainer. Appreciate it. All right. So, what do we got? What do we got going? We're gonna do some. We're gonna do some stuff. We are gonna do some stuff and things. What was I doing? I don't know. I got distracted. Uh, okay. There we go. Let's throw some, yeah, mutable textures in there. And why did we do that? Because in he did something here where, yes, mute textures, right? So resource mutable, right? Yep. Yeah. We want to have a nope, assets first, just like below. Mm. So texture. I'm gonna throw that in there. Put a comma there, just to keep it rusty. Keep it rusty. All right. Now what's your malfunction? Why are you, why are you giving me errors? I don't know. It's probably just TalJ being slow. I'm not gonna worry about it. Right. Cool. So we've got some sort of texture handle, view texture. Assets. Textures. Well, I shouldn't be copying their stuff. I should be looking at my stuff. Tile sets. <laughs> One dot PNG. There we go. That seems. Seems pretty good. So we want to do a, a synchronous load, I guess, into the mutable textures resource gizmo there, right? Uh, our our little tile sets, tile set a one. That would be the. That looks like the better thing to do there. Do that so that we can uh, unwrap it. I don't think we can just throw a question mark in there, can we? Uh, who calls this? Uh, this guy does. Ah, I see. Yeah, alright, so I guess we'll just say unwrap. To keep it easy. Unwrap. There we go. Kind of used to the functional world of doing that sort of thing. I think for... Yeah, for keeping our... Error checking stuff on the same line as the check that it's doing that. I think I'll do that. Let's see. Now, now I guess we should get a texture from it. All right. Textures dot get. We're gonna say texture handle. Yep, and we're just gonna unwrap that, assuming that everything is good to go. This is not. Production code is, uh, let's try to figure out how to get stuff working code, right? Big difference in quality levels. So, I'm just trying to, just trying to move quick for learning purposes. You know, if after all of our learning, we throw a bunch of stuff away to, to get the production ready code that we need, then that's what we'll do. That's fine. So, texture size 7. Wait. This is a 512 by 512 thing. So we should probably give it that. <laughs> probably. Alright, so let's, um, we're gonna do it from grid, right? So we've got a 512 over 16, right? Is 32? Yeah, that makes sense. So we'll just say, what, 32 by 32? Just to give it the proper sizing, I guess, for the 
for the 512 by 512 image that we have with the 16 by 16, uh, what you call it? Uh, yeah, size. All right, cool. So uh, yeah, because this size here is definitely going to be the 512 by 512. Uh, we're just not that interested in most of the textures that will be available since they'll be blank. Uh, we need a texture atlas handle now, which we can get, I guess, from texture what, atlases. Yeah, where's texture at? Ah, I think I should probably bring it in. Do we not need materials for this? No, we don't need materials for this. So we can say, mute this texture. Ooh. At, yeah, atlases. Plus we font. Res. Oh, I need a res mute, because it's mutable. Uh, assets, and we're gonna go with texture atlas. Looks pretty good. Let's we'll see how long it takes for IntelliJ to catch up to whether or not that's correct. Atlas dot. And what are we adding? We're adding our texture atlas to it. Okay, so commands. Hmm. So we kind of, I think we're happy with like a default camera. In here. We're not doing anything wacky with our camera. Is there any particular reason that we need to even specify the camera? I think it's fine. We can just say camera default. I think that's all we really needed in there. And here's our projection. So, so that'll be interesting to play to see what happens, right? When we do something or other with our texture atlas. So now I guess we can add a sprite sheet component. All right? Yeah. Spawn. I'm gonna go ahead and spawn a sprite sheet comments. Sprite sheet comments, yes. That's what we're gonna say texture atlas colon texture atlas handle. And then what? Then we want a transform with a transform. Form from scale. Remember this guy up here? Yeah. Let's bring him back. So I can give it to this guy. Keep him happy. And we want like what? Default. Default. Alright. And that's for our sprite sheet components. Alright, so we so we spawn one of them. That seems good. Um, now I didn't get to, I didn't choose which of these things to use. So, is that okay? Doesn't seem right. So, um, we got some main passes, some other stuff, or, or texture, texture atlas sprite. Sort of, uh, we didn't give it one of those yet, huh? All right, let's, uh, check the rest of this code here, right? Because I'm willing to bet he does something with it, maybe in this animate sprite system. Where he receives, what, texture atlases. We've already got one of these, but ours is res immutable. And he gets a query. All right, fine. And then what? 
And then considering the timer, I guess for each mutable sprite and things, we're gonna query stuff. If the timer is finished, then the texture here is just the texture atlas, which is fine. We should already have that. This here says sprite.index. What is sprite? Where did that come from? Mutt sprite here is part of the query. The sprite here is our texture atlas sprite. All right. Yes, this, this that's the texture atlas sprite guy right there. All right, so let's, uh, let's double check him. So he's got some sort of a color. He's got a default, right? Uh, and an index, I guess, which is fine. But probably what it did. All right, so let's try setting it to index zero, right? And then, uh, and then we could, or let's find a more interesting one. Let's, yeah, let's try setting it to index one. And we're going to bet that we see our great uh, that's, that's the idea. Alright, so what do we want here? We want to say, like, what? Sprite is equal to a, what, a texture atlas sprite. And we want our index to be 1. And then we will say dot dot default default. And a little comma there. Good to go. All right, man. So what's this thing mad about? Oh, I, I expected some stuff. Function takes one parameter, but four were supplied. Really? Mm-hmm. This didn't look like no method I was putting stuff into. This is a pub sprite. A pub sprite in there. That was all I added, wasn't it? There we go. <laughs> it was. Uh, it was not happy with that particular trailing comma. Wow. Yeah, Rust, you crazy. All right. Let's see what we got. We get anything? Oh my goodness. Oh, all of the errors. Ugh. Let's see, no such file or directory. Probably. I probably messed something up here. Right, what did we do? We said assets. Ah, oh, this should have said tile sets. Alright. We can go ahead and try that one again. All right, sweet. Nothing showed up. <laughs> that's uh, that's that's to be expected. Why did nothing show up? Is it because I messed with the camera, or is it because this I didn't do something in here correctly? Right, it's always it's always the question. Let's try unmessing with the camera. Do I want to unmess the camera? I don't know. Let's look at that default. What did it have for the name? Anything? Uh, yo, camera. What do you got for what do you got for default? Man, don't mess with me, man. I know you got some defaults. Yeah, the default for option is none. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. I probably messed up then when I did the thing. Uh, it's ha how do you sometimes? All right, so what are we gonna say here? We're gonna say camera 2D. Everything here is very important to be precise, otherwise it doesn't work. Oh, then we can come back here and say what dot dot default default no trailing comma. 
Man, does it get mad when you give it a trailing comma on these defaults? <laughs> Everything else on Rust, trailing comma! But, uh, yeah, not so much the, um, after a default. Alright, I think it did it. Yeah, hey, look at that! And our bet paid off. We were correct, and wow, he, he even looks to be the correct size and everything. And look, look at our little map. What do we got? Oh man, now we can we can make him real small. We can make him we can make him this small. We can like just keep growing him and growing him <laughs> up to uh, what the ultra high def the the uh, the 4K resolutions, right? Yeah. Up to the 4K resolutions where it becomes six times larger. And no and it's always pixel perfect. That's what I was talking about last last time. Always pixel perfect. Get the camera nice. Look at it go. You know? Pretty sweet. Alright, so. So this is where, like, you know, if I were running truly like naive, unoptimized code. I guess I might put something like that into some nested for loops <laughs> and uh, and generate a map. Uh, but it can't it can't be that hard to get some uh, some better accelerated stuff going, right? I mean, we're just trying to draw a grid of things, right? That's that's what I think. All right, so. Yeah, let's uh, let's think about it. Let's think about what we want to do. What do we want to do? Let's go ahead then, and I think let's uh, let's define ourselves an enu, and uh, we'll we'll organize this back somewhere later, right, for us to play with, just like we've been doing with everything else that we just randomly throw into main at first. Uh, so I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go structs. I'm gonna make I'm gonna struct. I don't think so. What do I want? I want like some sort of pub, enum, tile. I'm not sure how, again, I'm not sure how e efficient or inefficient the uh, matching is. And if we really need to, well, that's what, you know, we can, that's what or, you know, ordinal values of the enums plus, you know, const arrays are for. And we can, uh, you know, then it's just, just as fast as an array lookup. You can get all sorts of stuff and things done. So. Man. What am I doing? I was gonna do, uh, yeah, so we've got, we've got a couple tiles here already. So we've got like, what, a floor, a grate, a closed south door, right? Right, so we've got like, yeah, floor, grate, closed south door. Uh, what else we got? We got, um... What else we got? What else we got? Uh, a wall. Right? Maybe a switch or something. And, uh... Door open. Right? So we have a wall. Maybe a switch. And then we can have a what? Ah, that's right. This guy... Yeah, no underscores in your enums. What's your... You're still mad? What? What are you mad about? Dude, get happy, man. I did rename it to Closed South Door. What are you talking about? Whatever. I want to go with Open South Door. Alright. And now what? Now, you can just kind of hard code some stuff real quick, right? Where we say Impl Tile... And then what? We want to have some sort of index for them, and that's about it, right? So, which again... Eh, that's fine. So, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? We say, uh, hi there, in Blanky. I remember in Blanky, yes. Just passing by to wish a good stream. Well, thank you very much, in Blanky. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thank you very much. Yeah, I uh, you know need all the views I can get, right? <laughs> Us uh, newbie streamers. All right, so yeah, we implement some tiles. 
Oh, hey! Lord MZTE is back! Yeah, so I was just talking about how, you know, I'm not 100% sure if this is the most optimal way of doing things. We could, we could definitely take some benchmarks on it later, figure out, like, what to do. But, uh, for now, this is like, eh, this is easy. I'll just, I'll just do it. <laughs> right, so, what, what am I doing? I'm doing FM. Like, uh, index? Yeah, I want some sort of an index. So, what sort of index do I need? I need a, uh, like, what is this type? A U32, huh? Alright, sure, why not? I mean, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. U32, alright. And then what? Oh, that's right, we need to take in as a reference self. So that we can do match self. What? Did I, did I, did I do it wrong the other way? Match must be exhaustive. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to it. I'll exhaust the match. Yes, but good to see you again, Lord MZTE. Alright. So, case. Um, we're really gonna. Yeah. Tile. How's this? Floor. Is this right? Do I want an arrow? I think it's an arrow here. Oh, it's no case. No case. That's what it is. Too many languages. An index derived macro seems like a good excuse to learn. <laughs> sin and quote, huh? I'm not 100 sure I know what, know about sin and quote. Uh, I know that. So I could get a crate that will give me the ordinal numbers for these tiles. That's not what we're doing. What we're doing right now is we're trying to get the index to this. And this is a 512 by 512 sort of a, an image. So there are 32 by 32, uh, what do you call it? Uh, pictures in here. So this is actually 0, 1, right? 2, right? And like what? 32, 31, or sorry, 33, 34. That's, uh, so that's, that's, the, so that's the index that we're doing. So yeah, so floor is zero, right? I think yeah, we just put commas there, good to go. Floor rate we said was one tile. Closed south door is two. And we got tile wall. Because I'm pretty sure it's 32. Well, we'll find out soon enough when we try to put them down, yeah? <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, so we've got, yeah, switch should be 33 and tile. What's this? Open south door, right? Should be 34. Exit. Now. Yeah, these don't need to be that pretty. They're just, there's numbers. All right, cool. Got it. Although. This is an exhaustive match for the Enu, so I think we're good to go there. All right, so now we can play around some more. What are we gonna do? We're gonna, we're gonna take this, gonna add it, boom. Okay, one, right? So do we have two so far? Three, four, five, six. And we might wanna do some transforms now too. All right, so we're gonna keep the, um, First guy here, I guess we'll keep at origin, right? Just for fun. Uh, his index, let's change his index now to zero, because he's, he's the first guy. And that's fine. And uh, the camera, camera, yep, camera's fine, all right, good. One, right? So, so we've got, what, from scale? Is there like a from translation and scale, or what? Uh, from there we go. That's what I was looking. That's what I was thinking about. All right, cool. So yes, it is, but it's also like just test the things code, right? It's none of this is meant to be production code. This is all throwaway code, right? We're just we're just we're just learning, playing around with Rust, throwing some stuff in there, 
seeing what works. You know, this isn't production code. So we've got here a VEC 3. Maybe I need a VEC 3. Are you going to be happy with that or do I have to like, what do I have to do here? I forget. <laughs> Alright, so we'll say like what? One dot and then like zero, well zero dot and then zero. We're going to see if that even like, happy. I think we need, yes, we need a quaternion, right, and identity. And that seems good there. Now for scale, right, we just, we'll pop that in there. All right, so yes, this is a, uh, this is not meant to be production code. Let's just throw the stuff in there, see what sticks sort of thing, optimize it later, make it good later, you know? You don't wanna, you don't wanna get too caught up in the niceties of things to waste time with that basically when we could be like learning figuring stuff out. Oh, I do want to put these things on second lines. Let's see. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, oh, I needed to get my transform. Ah. Transform. Boom. There we go. Cool. And the idea is to like, you know, you do a wide variety of experiments and stuff to figure out what sort of approach, what sort of approach is better. I like practicing good code, even for temporary stuff. Well, I've been coding since I was 12. So I, I also took that approach for many, many years. Uh, but these days I'm kind of over it and I just want stuff to work. And then I'll, then I'll, then I'll, then I'll make it good. That's, that's right, pro, that's right, programmer. That's, that's, the, that's, 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 that's my philosophies these days. I'm getting too old to try to make my code super pretty and good when in reality it's all I was really doing was an experiment that I didn't even know whether it was going to work or not so I'd rather I, I want to fail faster is what it is fail the fail as fast as I can you know do a wide variety of experiments you know don't just assume what's what's the best way you know test it test it test it all right private well not this again not this again. What I do, man? What do I need to say? Like, is is new? Is that does that make it less errory? Or how many errors did I get last time? Uh, five previous errors. Sure. Now what? Four. All right. Fine. Uh, fine. Yep. 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 Uh, unclosed delimiter. What are you talking about? Uh, let's see, open, open, open. Oh, why are there two? Oh, was well, that okay? Copy paste there. I see. That's fine. Yep, it's all about failing fast. What's your malfunction? It's never used! Alright, well, there. I'll leave me alone about it. <laughs> Alright, shift F10. What do we got? Woo! Man! Alright, I think, I think one of them's off. Maybe I neglected to change an index or something. Maybe uh, maybe I need to do something about my transforms too. They look a little little off somewhere. Alright, that's that's pretty fun. Let's let's think about what we did. Yeah, some of these are too much here. So we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, right? Now we need what? Oh, what am I doing? Yes, that, that is wrong. That's not what we're doing at all. What were we doing? Uh, tile. 
Yeah, that's what that's what we should be doing. What was, what was I thinking? Oh, wall. I don't. Yeah, floor. Right. Dot what? Dot index, please. Thank you. That's what. That's what we should have been doing. Yeah, let's do that. Do the do. So we got some floors. We got some what? Uh, walls. I don't even care if they're in order anymore, right? You just, you're gonna throw them down there. Uh, open south door. All right, that's what that's what we're testing. Like, why is this saying I don't use the thing? I could swear I just did. Nope. All right, tile switch index. Great. Oh. And now, now we want the closed south door. Sweet. All right, that's what we want. So I see you made it to the stream programmer. How's it going? Ooh, look at, look at that. All right. So is that is that one guy wrote? No, he's not rotated funny. That's the that's the open door, right? Yeah, it must be. Is that the open door or the closed door? I don't know. Hang on. Yes, yes. The the open door. The, this one should be the open door. No, this is this one's the closed door. This one's the open door. Close open. All right. Yeah, closed, open. All right, closed, open. Yeah, all right. All right, cool. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. We got uh, we got some, we got some tiles going. But again, this is like the inefficient, super bad way of doing things. And because uh, the the goal now basically is okay, we've proven that we can get a texture atlas working. We can kind of play around with some of the defaulty stuff that Bevy's given us to, to make some progress, right? But uh, but ultimately, we want to have an efficient tile rendering system. And I think that we can take a lot of examples, uh, or a lot of inspiration from what? The Bevy Tiled Project. So I think uh, next time or so, which yeah, ne next time we will. Uh, that's, this is what we will look into, and that, and that will be the stream for next time. Um, yeah, we're, we're gonna get all this stuff up and going. We might even want to play around with a separate project, a just a WGPURS sort of a project, so we can we can properly learn WGPURS without an engine's help. So that way, when we come into here, hopefully we'll better understand what's going on because uh let's see so there's a few components in here this all seems like a normal engine -y sort of stuff i think right i uh, see we've got some materials and maps and meshes is this the this is the this is to process it whatever processing means but the look at that somewhere in here we should start seeing some but yeah the pipeline code in particular right yeah, this is where we actually start drawing. This is where we start uh, being exposed to kind of the WGPURS stuff. And this is how we're going to make an efficient renderer for our, uh, you know, for the project. To make sure that our, our tiles are, are good. And they're not just like, you know. When I, when I render like the many thousands of tiles for my game, my game slows down. <laughs> like, yeah, that's, did you make them all entities? Yeah, okay, that's why. Right? So instead we can have nice, efficient sort of data structures. I'm thinking like uh, just a single array. Yeah, uh, as is common for, for most chunk sort of implementations that I'm aware of. Right, you have simple little functions for the array. Let's say like how to access the, 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 you know, a cell within it. I like the idea of chunking, right? And, uh, and then having maps to contain the chunks. So there'll, there'll be a lot of stuff that we'll reuse, I think, from the Spevy Tiled plugin and some other stuff that we just sort of, uh, you know, we'll, we'll do it our own way. See how, see what that gets us. 
But that's that's next stream. For now, look at it. We got we got our camera, we got our projection thing working. So, you know, if your window is small, you know, you get you get some one X looking tiles, right? Very you know. If you you know, what is it, two X maybe? Three three X? Somewhere somewhere in here, right? There's like a, so I think this is still yeah, one X, two X, three X, right? And then here it should be 4x? Yep, right around there. 4x. Yeah, so we've got we've got pixel perfect rendering with a resizable window. Right? And yes, so depending on the resolution, you will see more or less of the game world, but that is just the sacrifice that we made to avoid having window a window within a window, essentially, of like Kind of floating you know, sidebars and top bars and bottom bars. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's pretty good. Uh, it, it is likely dinner time for me where I am at, so I'll have to you know go downstairs and check that. At least I was told dinner time would be coming up around 7:30. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, thanks for hanging out, you guys. Appreciate all the discussion, you know, all the learning and things. Let's see. Yes, I am saying that I am ending the stream. Uh, Lord MZTE. Uh, yeah, I think we, uh, we, we made a, a little bit of progress. We added some new features. We, uh, we, we can render each of our tiles anyways, right? Uh, the, the, or the code is a little more organized than it was. Yep, so I'll see you guys later. Uh, and thank you very much for stopping by.